Welcome back to Thursday Night Grind. It is January 23rd, 2020, and uh, we are live for uh, Thursday Night Grind, 8.30 Eastern Time, every Thursday. Join me on YouTube to grind a knife that's on the bench. My name is Matt. I own the American Edge. It is a small sharpening service in New Hampshire, and tonight we are going to sharpen this little guy. This is one of those sweet, I think it's sweet. So I, um, I got it from Chef's Knives to Go. I'll leave a, a link in the description. It's a it's like a Japanese box cutter. I don't know if you can see like the, uh, it's got the characters on it and stuff. It's like 12 bucks. It's a high carbon steel. I'm pretty excited about it. My other bench knife is this Open L. I do have some other knives on the bench for customers, but I've been itching to sharpen this thing and I'm pretty optimistic about the way it'll come out. So, be, I just want to share like the edge that came on it is is not good. It's it's clear it, I, I can't show you here, but like it's Like this section is maybe okay And then like there's barely even an edge here. So like the edge that came with it is bad I'm optimistic that once it gets an edge uh, This steel will be one that takes uh, and holds the edge before we get to that I do have an announcement and that is for Anyone that's been with me for any period of time, you know that I love my 1x30 belt sander. Hold on one second. Sorry for the background noise. It's a little cool in the studio tonight. Uh, let's see if I can doff my hat. Uh, but anyway, the, I just want to let you know that at Woodcraft for the rest of the month, for January 2020, their Rikon, R-I-K-O-N, belt sander 1x30 is on sale for $100, which is uh, a smoking deal, especially if you don't have to get it shipped. So if you live near a Woodcraft, check that out if you want to add a 1x30 to your arsenal. The other thing they have going on, and this there's someone that introduced me to this, I just got this down on my bench, it's these silicon bench pads. They're like made for like woodworkers, for like, you know, paint, you know, whatever, finishing stuff, like, but they're great for knife sharpeners. I'll show you what I got going on here. I got it down on my protects the, protects the blades. Like I've been, I've been, been trying to find the right thing. Like I've tried carpet, just straight up wood. I tried the, um, some other stuff, but anyway, uh, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that this silicon pad is going to be a good solution and it's like half off. So uh, feel free to check that out at Woodcraft. The other thing I got going on, I'm, I got, as you might have just seen, I got a little mess going on. I'm doing the, uh, I'm, I'm doing the Tormek and uh, man, that thing, it, it does okay. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of the Tormek. I just did some other knives on the... Um, Oh shoot, what is that thing? The WorkSharp blade grinding attachment. Um, I didn't do everything right, I, so there's still a learning curve for me there. Um, but anyway, like uh, I'm kind of a fan of the Tormek. You might, you might see that work its way into my sharpening some more. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go to the Edge Pro. I'm gonna bring you down here and we're gonna set it up for this little guy. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, give you. Oh, <laughs> so that's the thing about being live. If I were uh, if I were cutting this out and editing it, I would not include me dropping you. Oh man, I'd get a better tripod once I get my. Oh, the other thing is, I don't have a thousand subscribers, so this isn't live. So please, if uh, if you get, have a fascination with sharpening and want to see more, just like sharp, knife and tool sharpening, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Once I get a thousand subscribers, I'm at like 993. Come on, help me out. Uh, I can actually go live, which would be great. All right, so back to the show here. Uh, I gotta soak my stones. I should do a, uh, a pre-test too with this blade just to see what we're starting at. Boy, sucking on the videography tonight. Sorry, man. Let's see if we can let's see if we can up our game here. All right, so I got this little thing. 
Yeah, like not, not delivered with a nice edge. Ah. Okay, like he can make it cut. Okay, all right. Yeah, but even then, like you said, just it falls apart on that part. All right, so anyway, I'm, I'm optimistic we can do way better on this. Let's, stones are soaking. Um, I did, I didn't, I'm not going to put this on the one by 30. It, it's close enough. I think I can cut the rest of a, a fresh bevel with my 120 stone. Let me set this up on the edge. Pro. Um, it has a relatively, relatively thick spine, but I'm still going to remove this cover. I think that I, I think that that is just going to be a bit much because the blade is so narrow here. So I'm not, hopefully that makes sense. That and that and this. All right. All right, and if you haven't seen it yet, Edge Pro has a Nice little magnet that they've made for the Apex. They also have it for the Pro. Uh, but that thing is kind of nice. I wasn't sure going into it, but what the what the issue here can be is um, if, it, if you have a hard time grabbing the flat of a blade, and with one that's this small, it can be hard to keep it flat here. So this magnet is really just an assist, especially for this knife. All right, and I'm going to do, I got 21 degrees set here. What I'm saying here is I have 21 degrees set on my post, setting the thickness for my 120 stone. Let's see what this does for me. It won't take long to get there. Checking, I already have a burr on everything but the very tip. Let's do the other side and see how we do. check for burr. Remember, if you're not building a burr, you're not at the edge. Never move past these, these first stones without building a burr. I can see and I can feel I've got it all the way at the tip now. All right, so I'm good to move on. Not too bad. Put that on my silicone pad. Clean that swarf off of the bed. For anybody that's like trying to learn how to sharpen, I recommend watching all sorts of videos. Just take, make, make your own technique, like watch other people, but uh, pay attention to the, the minute things. That's why I love watching Cody and Ben over at Edge Pro. Like just the little things, the way they stroke, the way they, they take care of their stones. It's those little details that sometimes get overlooked that, that really make the process um, work better and get you better results. So uh, one thing you can't really see is that I, I give most of the attention on the pull stroke. Like that's where I feel like um, I want my cutting action to be happen rather than on the push stroke in most cases. And then the pressure 
it's not like I'm not leaning on it. And it kind of depends on what stone I'm at, but um, just kind of like pay attention to the sound that it makes. And that's why I think there's value in this. Like as the time goes past 10 minutes, like you can feel like this is taking a long time. Uh, it's these little things that I'm, I'm just trying to hope give you something to key into. And then uh, it's so that you can improve your own sharpening skills. Yeah, the, as I'm thinking about it too, like paying attention at the tip, like don't don't roll over the tip. Like you need to get most of the cutting action is happening. You can tell where like the stone wears right in the middle, so you do need to work your stone past the the tip of the knife. But you don't want to like you don't want to fall off it. You know, like you, you just need to be real careful when you're working at the tip. And you can you can apply like a little bit of side pressure here and there. Like if you need when you're getting in. Um, at this edge of the blade, you might you might lean in a little a little bit here to make sure that you're cutting at the uh, across the whole length of the blade. That's it for two fifty. This is the 650. Once I'm up at 650, one thing I like to do, like I'm at the point now where I'm building a a burr that's fine enough so that I'm probably I'm, yeah I mean I can pick it up I can feel it but what I like to do is just with a real light pass cut that burr off yeah I learned that doing scissors it kind of surprised me that that's how it worked but eleven hundred Now, as I work my way up in stone, you're getting more of a polishing effect than a cutting effect. So I go even lighter on the pressure and a little bit faster on the rep. And I put it now, it's probably at the point where I really can't feel the burr. Oops, not on the side. Yeah, yeah, barely, but still, real light pass, cut that burr off. Twenty three hundred. I'll take it to four thousand. These are the uh, Edge Pro Diamond Matrix stones. If you're looking for it, like I, I can see when I'm getting the stone all the way to the tip of the blade. I can't show you on the camera. It's one of those things. You'll just pay attention for it when you're sharpening. Try to use the whole stone. See my uh, my paint is starting my paint my tape is starting to peel up a little bit here, which is uh, affecting the angle of my knife. So uh, I will be replacing this tape, but I'm not going to do it before I finish this knife. If this were a really high-end folding blade or carry knife, I might consider putting a new piece of tape on there. This is a box cutter.
right? So now the finish, cut that burr, but I'd love to finish with a trailing stroke on each side. All right, so I'm going to finish this one. At, this is 4,000. If I were doing, I, so, dipping into opinion here a little bit, I, I kind of think that your, your cutting quality, once you go up to a thousand, like the ability, the cutting, like you've kind of topped out. If you want to really like, I call it the Facebook finish. That's if, you know, like if I were doing a, a high quality knife, I would take it to 6,000 and it just, it, it shines, it puts a mirror, it's beautiful. Um, it doesn't, uh, it's, I think for cutting quality, it doesn't matter a whole lot. A thousand's probably good, but anyway, like that's fine. Whoa, getting a little, a little thin here. Okay, so yeah, it takes an edge, but let's, let me see if I have some cardboard. What I'm curious in is like, kind of, can it do a little bit of damage on some cardboard and then still cut paper? All right, that's, that's not bad. If you do want to, you see guy, got a knife. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Right? Oh, that's so bad for a knife. Oh, don't do that. Ah, that's why you need a, that's, that's for a utility blade. Don't do that to your nice knife. Ah, okay, but. <laughs> Hope the guys at Sharpening Supplies don't mind my tearing up their paper. But anyway, let's see, did it hold it? Yeah, it's fine, it's good. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, I think, that's fine. I think it's gonna be an okay bench knife. The, the thing I didn't, the thing I wasn't super stoked about the open L, this, shoot. Yeah, it's a number five, I had to look. I think maybe a number eight would be better suited for the bench. I, I, for some reason, thinking I just want a little guy. Uh, it's sweet, I, like, I, I really like this knife. It's also like 12 bucks. Um, carbon steel blade. Carbon, um, it's just real thin. Didn't feel, like it doesn't have the meat for cardboard. I feel like with this guy, like it's kind of a kind of thick. And as yeah, like it, it kind of. Let's just let's just let's just see that open L. It'll do it. Yeah, it'll do it. All right. It's maybe I, maybe I didn't give it a fair shot. Maybe I'm just a knife nut and I love getting knives. What I really do like is, is finding uh, affordable knives. Like these would be nice for a little giveaway or sweet little gift. It's got a bunch of kanji or hiragana, katakana, whatever that is. I don't, I don't know. Looks cool. Okay, so uh, that's it for Thursday Night Grind. Running a little long here. 18 minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, if you have any interest in uh, sharpening tools and stuff like that, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have any interest in having a knife sharpening business, please reach out to me. That's the next venture I'm working on. Uh, primarily, I need to finish building my studio. It's coming along. It's actually coming along really well. I'm really excited. Uh, but the next way for me is to kind of revolutionize this, the, the um, small town sharpener, even big town, just like the local sharpener. Like if you want to be the go-to sharpener guy for your community, then I'm I'm really interested in helping you set that up. So. Uh, you can reach out to me. I'll put my contact info in the description below. I was going to give you my spiel on why everyone should have a business. It's running a little late. So I'll give you, I'll try to keep it down to like the one minute version. Uh, so, and uh, I, it's tough. There's a lot of reasons why I, I'm so bold to say that I think everybody should have a business. Um It'll be, it'll be very personal for you why you need to have a business or want a business. Uh, one, a major motivator that uh, I, I feel like is not communicated enough is the, not just the money in earnings. Like that's clearly going to be, um, you know, it's, it's top of the list of everybody. Like, why do you want a side hustle? I'd like to make more money. Like, so like, I'm not, you know, blowing you away with that one. But what isn't explained or has, wasn't explained to me until too late in life was the tax structure as, uh, a, as an employee versus the tax structure as a business. 
So let's start this conversation. And again, I'm, I'm almost up to my minute, but like your biggest expense over the course of your life is going to be taxes. So uh, let's just not ignore the magnitude that we're talking about. And then there's a, there's like a, it seems small, but it's a huge difference. When you're an employee, you're going to make money. You're going to get taxed on that money. And whatever's left is what you get to live on. When you're a business, you're going to make money. You're going to spend money on your business and you're taxed on what's left. Uh, it might seem small, but it's not. And then what happens is like, yeah, like all of you, you know, you, you, all your business expenses become business expenses. So like your mileage to go pick up parts or your home office deduction or like part of your internet bill or your cell phone bill, like you need to be smart about um, applying the appropriate amount because you do use it for personal use as well. But when you're using those things for business now, at least some portion of those expenses and many others can be included as business expenses. And that means that they are paid for with untaxed money. You can still keep your day job. Like this isn't even me advocating you getting a business and leaving your day job. It's just having a business so that some expenses can be paid for with money that is not taxed. And uh, you can think of that as almost an automatic 20 or 30%, depending on what tax bracket you fall in, discount on the stuff that you buy to operate your business. Um, I leave it at that. Like it's a big deal. Uh, if you want to talk about it, let me know. Thanks so much. Next Thursday, see ya. I'm not sure what I'll be grinding, like whatever's on the bench. Thanks for tuning in.